Now we'll try to, to, to do an explanation for why the spectral series of the hydrogen was the way we, we found out or way the Balmer arrived there. So, so we are actually trying to explain. So explanation of, of the line spectrum of line spectrum of hydrogen of hydrogen okay so we'll require certain concepts of of uniform circular motion and electrostatics for that and that I'll I'll tell you in brief right so 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 just concentrate so what happens if there is a charge here that is q1 okay and there is another charge here that is q2 and and the distance between them is say r say this is r okay then then the potential energy okay so the potential energy of this system of charge is k into q1 q2 upon r okay where k is a constant equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 this is the first concept that you you need okay right now the second thing that you'll require is if If a particle is undergoing a uniform circular motion, so if it is undergoing a uniform circular circular motion, circular motion, okay, with with a velocity with a velocity v okay and what will be the direction of velocity v it will be tangential it will be tangential to the radius right so 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 this will be 90 degree if this is velocity v okay then this happens and if this velocity is constant then this happens because because the 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 particle is actually being accelerated towards the center okay so and this acceleration is called centripetal acceleration okay we'll derive it to be we will derive it and and see that this acceleration the magnitude of this acceleration which we which we call call centripetal acceleration so so centripetal acceleration is equal to the mass m of the particle into v square velocity square the square of the velocity upon the the distance from the center the radius of the circle that it is it is it is sweeping okay get that this is acceleration this is this is acceleration part is I'm sorry the acceleration part is this much and the centripetal corresponding centripetal force is centri centripetal force force 
is mass multiplied by this acceleration by Newton's law and that becomes m v square 1 over r. Get that? Get that? This is the centripetal force. Okay. Now, so that means that until and unless there is a force that is pulling it towards the center, a body will not undergo a circular motion. Understand? You have to be pulling it. So, so maybe you, you take a thread, uh, 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 say, say, say a child takes a thread, okay? Yeah. So, so a child kind of takes a thread and, 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 and and, and ties it to a, a stone and starts whirling it over his head okay like that it's above his head with this as center who is providing the who is providing the the centripetal force the tension of the thread right with, with with the with the earth with the sun at the center the earth also undergoes undergoes a similar kind of motion though not circular but but let us assume it to be circular for for the moment okay it is actually an elliptical movement okay but, but let me kind of just just simplify it so if it goes some undergoes something like that then at every point, who is providing this centripetal force? The force of gravitation. gravitation. So force of gravitation is equal to the force of gravitation should be equal to m v square upon upon r. Okay. Fine. Now, if you understand these two concepts, we are in a position to to investigate the line spectrum not only in a hydrogen atom okay so so we are not we are in a position to investigate the line spectrum not only in a hydrogen atom okay but also in any mono electronic species okay so for hydrogen and any mono electronic species okay Fine. And what do you mean by monoelectronic species? So, so for hydrogen, hydrogen itself is monoelectronic, right? How many electrons? One. For helium, how many electrons do we have? Actually, two. Correct? So, how do you make it monoelectronic? You make it lose one electron. So, it becomes what? It becomes He plus. Is it not? So, so this boils down to, this reduces to, to one electron. And how about lithium? How many electrons does it have? Three. How does it become monoelectronic? Two plus. No? So I am talking about all these, right? Which are monoelectronic. So, so here, either hydrogen atom and others will be obviously cations. Such that the electron is only one. But have we changed the number of protons? How many protons? One. How many here? Two. How many here? Three. Okay. So I am actually talking about about any atom. Any atom that has that has how many protons? How many protons are there in an atom? as many as the atomic number so that has z and how do i represent my atomic number we represent atomic number by by z atomic number any atom that has z number of protons protons 
so so what is the charge at the center what is the charge at the center z e is it not because because we know from the periodic table that it is the atomic number it is the number of protons inside the nucleus which decides the element to be whatever it is right so so it is so it is number of protons and if there is z number of protons what is the charge at the center the charge is z times the basic charge e the charge on a proton so so let me make some space the charge on the proton is z e so at the center i i put a charge z e and this is positive this is the nucleus right and i know that around the atom there are so many there are so many orbits right as rutherford told us there are so many orbits okay i concentrate i concentrate on on the orbit which is the nth orbit this is the nth orbit okay so i designate the distance as r n okay the distance of the nth orbit from the center is r n so the distance of the first orbit is r1 then r2 right fine <clears throat> and the corresponding velocity of this the corresponding velocity of this i designate as as v n right we designate this as v n correct as to okay then by the just by the by the theory the second one that we discussed just now that the that the that the n n n i should have also told you something about the coulomb's law which i did not the third thing that you'll require in all this is that so 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 let me write the third one here right if 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 this is the distance between the charges and this is how it is uh, there then the coulombic force of attraction is k q1 q2 upon upon r square where again k is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 and and the unit is newton meter square per coulomb square same here newton meter square per coulomb square these three things we require right okay so let me go back let me let me go back to this so i know that there'll be a there'll be a centripetal force right what is centripetal force and this centripetal force centripetal has to be equal to the coulombic force of attraction correct see this is positively charged this is an electron this is negatively charged so there is a force of attraction in the same way as as the sun attracts the earth so it is quite good to go it, it is it is possible for it to be moving in a circular orbit yes something not visible yeah okay so so what is the coulombic force of attraction it is k multiplied by the charge here what is the charge here z e and this charge here is what e upon upon r n 
स्क्वायर राइट के क्यू वन क्यू टू अपॉन आर स्क्वायर दैट इज दूलम्बिक फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन एंड we just discussed that the that the centripetal force is equal to mass of the electron into the velocity which here is vm square v vm so vm square upon r m correct okay now that was the dilemma with rutherford that this actually we have discussed this we have discussed this earlier and we have seen that that both of them are variable so i can keep on putting the value of one and the other will automatically keep on getting getting changed now is that possible is that possible that's what we'll see okay so so this this thing becomes k z e square upon upon if this rn comes here it cuts one so upon rn is equal to m v n square correct this is the first equation i have to contend with the centripetal the centripetal thing right so we have got only one equation and there is a there is a trouble here in this equation that that uh, you can place the atom anywhere you you can place the, uh, not the atom you can place the place the electron anywhere at any distance and with the requisite vm it will keep on revolving without getting sucked in by the sucked in by the by the nucleus that is possible but but we saw that all the atoms are identical had 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 they been at different distances the line spectrum would also have been would, the line spectrum would also have been different but we find that is not the case the line spectrum for for say a particular element is like like your your fingerprint it is it is absolutely identical so that tells me that that the distances from the center will will not be a variable and they have to be they have to be unique so if you want the uniqueness here if if you want uniqueness here then what happens okay what happens is you will have you have two variables if you want both of them to be solved you should have you should have another equation involving rn and vm and that equation was provided by the great great neil bohr he said that there is an additional equation which is this l which is nothing but the angular momentum angular momentum is equal to n h upon 2 pi and what is angular momentum l actually is equal to m For for a, for a circular thing is m v n r n. I'm not writing the 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 vector equivalent of this because otherwise you get scared at this stage. Okay, I'm not writing because it's a cross product and then I have to explain and explain to you why why is that. But but the but the magnitude is this. So the other equation that we were looking for is here m m vn rn is equal to nh upon 2 pi now what do you do what do you do here you you take 1 upon rn okay i, I keep it here so what happens this whole thing I, i i bring bring to the left hand side so that gives me m vm 2 pi upon n h get that you can write that now i have a way out because because if i put it here 
I have an equation which involves only Vn and which is uniquely solvable and hence it will have a unique Vm. The nth orbit will have a unique Vm and the moment the Vm is unique, Rn also becomes unique. Right? Get that? So, so let us solve that. So let us solve that. So, so I get this is my second equation. So solving we get this from this and, and putting the value of Rn, the value of Rn in 1 we get Of, of 1 upon Rn in, in 1 we get we get Kz e square and, and, and I should tell you that K is nothing but 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught where epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 okay so this is nothing but kz e square kz e square and you just put in the value of this 1 upon rn multiplied by 1 upon rn which is m vn 2 pi upon upon nh that is equal to m vn square and I'm in a position to cut this, right? No space here. Let me move slightly to the right. Okay, so 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 what is that? This Vn gets cut and this M comes down, right? So so M actually I can cancel. And this Vn gets cut. So I get Vn is equal to Vn is equal to instead of K I write 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Okay, 4 pi epsilon naught, 4 pi epsilon naught. It is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught in, in, in place of k into z e square intact. This vn cut another vn here so that that vanishes into 2 pi upon m h is equal to v m right i'm sorry i've already written v n to the left hand side so 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 no no use of this right so 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 v n is equal to one upon m zeri square now, now this also gets cut right two so z square, this gets cut twice. So n epsilon naught h. So we get the value of vn, right? And and I have an n here. So one upon n. I took this out. This is there is no more n here, right? So this n is not required. It's already taken care of here. So in a sense, we, we mean to say that my vn falls off as 1 upon n. Okay, and there are many numericals which will test you for this. Understand? Right? There are numericals which will test you for this. Okay. Okay. So 
So Vn is inversely proportional to m. So so if if for for n equal to one it is v not v one, but n equal to two it will become half of that. N equal to three it will become one third of that. Okay. So so it means in a sense that 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 the the electrons which are which are the closest are the fastest, right? And that in the tenth orbit is moving at one tenth the speed, right? Is moving at one tenth the speed. Fine. So so this is important. Now we'll try to find out what is R n. Now R n is given in terms of of V n. So so let us do that. R n is equal to m edge upon m v n into two pi, which is equal to Let us try to put the the value of one upon v n. So 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 it is it is n edge upon two pi m and one upon v n. So let me write the denominator here as the numerator here. So it is two n epsilon naught h upon z e square. Another thing to be to be noted here was v n is directly proportional to z. So as z goes up, your v n goes up. So okay. So so in a helium, in a helium atom, helium ion, H e plus, the velocity of the first orbit will be will be Double, uh, double the that you know hydrogen atom, right? Why? Because all these otherwise Z, okay? So Z is there. E is a constant. Epsilon naught is a universal constant. H is a universal constant. The only two things that are varying are Z and M, right? Correct. So so that is equal to this is equal to To again, what? It is equal to m square upon z. What is the what is this m? This this is the mass of the electron, right? So 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 this is m e actually, right? So so it is m square upon z into into two h. Square epsilon naught. This h and this h multiplies, right? N square already got multiplied. So two epsilon naught h square upon upon. There's a four pi square here, and that will get cut. So it will become two pi square, and I can I can erase this too, right? I can erase this too. So it is on two pi square. There's m square, right? M square, and no, not m square. There is only one m. I'm sorry. I I, I perhaps multiplied the m of this. Okay, <clears throat> so we have two pi, and and there is a pi only. Again, I multiplied this. So there's only a pi, and this two is also gone, right? Are we okay now? So this 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 two actually cancels this two, and 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 the pi remains, and m remains. Z is already taken there, and an e square is also there. So let me write e square here. Correct. So what happens? My R n is directly proportional to n square. And R n is inversely proportional to Z. Get that? Okay. So, so this is the this is the expression that. That gives me R n, and 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 
this is the expression that gives me R n. And and this expression and and this expression gives me V n. No one is asking you to remember these two, these two important ones, but you should understand the dependence on n and z. That is important. What happens when the atomic numbers increase? What happens when the when the n n increases? That means you go from one orbit to another. How does r n change? How does v n change? That is important. Okay, that is very very important. Fine. Now once you've got this, we are we are in a position to find out the energy of an electron revolving in in of an electron revolving in the nth orbit understand so so what is the total what is the what is the total energy in an orbit so 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 let there be let there be a let there be a okay so let there be a be an atom here something like that okay and and Okay, so let there be an atom here, and this is my orbit. I'm talking about the nth orbit. Then it has this electron that is moving like this, like this, has both the Ke as well as Pe, the kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. And let's try to see how they vary. So, so in the nth orbit, in the nth orbit, The Ke, okay. So I'm I'm trying to find out the total energy, total energy, the total, the total, the total energy. Okay. 